From the playgrounds of the inner city to the pro game, basketball is a sport in which African Americans excel. But the opportunities to play at the highest level, the National Basketball Association, did not come without a struggle. When the Basketball Association of America took over the National Basketball League in 1949, the NBA was formed. In its inception, it was an all-white league. The skilled African Americans played on barnstorming teams like the New York Wrens and the Harlem Globetrotters. The color barrier came down just over 60 years ago. It was a trio of players who did the honors. In 1950, the Boston Celtics selected Chuck Cooper from Duquesne University, making him the first black player ever drafted in the NBA. That same year, Nat Sweetwater Clifton left the Globetrotter and signed with the Knicks, becoming the first black player to sign a contract. And on Halloween night, 65 years ago, the Washington Capitals, Earl Lloyd, became the first black player to play the pro game. Lloyd, Cooper, and Clifton were the pioneers, though their names aren't household like Jackie Robinson's. Jackie walloped the home run into the lower left field stand. But times were different then. Baseball was America's pastime and its passion, while the NBA was a major league sidebar trying to survive in cities like Fort Wayne and Syracuse. When the color barrier was broken, few took notice. The first real impact the black athlete had on the NBA came in 1956, when a big man from the University of San Francisco signed with Boston. Bill Russell was the league's 22nd black player, but the first star. Russell would lead the Celtics to 11 titles in 13 years. In the process, he reshaped the game and opened doors for other talented players from his race. In 1959, Elgin Baylor became Rookie of the Year in Minneapolis. Two years later, Oscar Robertson, the big O, did the same in Cincinnati. In between, Wilt Chamberlain arrived in Philadelphia. Chamberlain would score 100 points in a single game averaged more than 50 points in a single season, and for the next decade, the legendary battles between Chamberlain and Russell put the NBA on national television and into America's living room. Free at last, free at last, and God Almighty, we are free at last. At the same time, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and the growing civil rights movement probed the conscience of a nation. The message was one of equal opportunity, and in basketball, it slowly became a reality. A watershed moment occurred in 1966 when Texas El Paso, with five black starters, beat Adolph Rupp's all-white Kentucky Wildcats for the NC2A championship. For the next three years, the college game was a showcase for UCLA's Lou Alcindor. He went on to become the NBA's Rookie of the Year in 1970 and its most valuable player in 1971. He would win the league's MVP award five more times as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. At the pro level, the black athlete was now prominent, and the game changed for the better because of it. A style born on the playground brought freedom and creativity to basketball. The 70s were a period of individual expression. This was best exemplified on the court by Julius Irving. Where Dr. J went, others followed. By the end of the 1970s, it wasn't uncommon to see 10 or more African-American men on an NBA roster. In the 30-some years since, from Magic, Michael, Kobe to LeBron, black athletes have become the league's brightest stars and most marketable performers. Right now, more than 75% of the league's players are African-American. And those that have risen to the top they owe a debt of gratitude to Chuck Cooper, Earl Lloyd, Nat Clifton, and so many others who have made this a fantastic game and one of the world's most popular sports.